The moment is here, you can stop your search. It's Comics by Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, what do we what do we have here? Well, let's uh, let's dig into it. it. Says, "Dear Chairman Perch." Okay, <laughs> that sounds slightly communist. Anyway, two questions. Number one, um, what do you think? Who do you think would win in a cage fight, the X Men writers or the Bat Family writers? Hmm. Well, given a lot of the uh, X Men writers uh, went over to the Bat Family, uh, I think there's there's a couple of them over there now. Um, I'm I'm probably going to go X office on this uh, at the moment. I mean, it, it really comes down to Jerry Duggan versus Chip Zdarsky um, in terms of a, a, a fight. So, I, I mean, I think those are going to be your favorite. Ben Percy strikes me as somebody who probably uh, could throw a pretty good punch. Um, I'm probably going I'm probably going the X the X office at the moment uh, in terms of the writers, given given a lot of people are over there. I mean, because remember, I, I don't picture uh, Teeny Howard being a big fighter. And, uh, teeny, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm probably going to go, uh, I think Charlie Jane Andrews could probably take teeny. I, I, anyway, I don't know who knows, um, who knows, but I think, I think Ben Percy, you fuel him up with a lot of Aussie beer and, uh, you, you get some, I mean, he's a guy who showed up on, uh, on, on live chats, uh, with actual Wolverine claws that he could kind of hold in his fingers and, he was, he seemed very happy showing them. So I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to go there. I'm, I'm thinking probably, uh, probably there. Uh, you said writers, you're talking teams, the, uh, bat family versus the X-Men, you know, all the mutants on Krako and Araku. I still think the bat family has more members at this point than the, uh, the entire island of Krakoa, uh, at this point. But, uh, I mean, if you're talking, you know, actual, the hero characters, well, of course the X-Men family is going to beat the shit out of that. I mean, you've got psychics you've got phoenixes you got all kinds of stuff and you know batman's detective skills are fine but you know i mean he's he's going to be really good if you need him to go and like build a bicycle for a kid who's talking to a statue version of himself but in terms of destroying planets i, I mean you know anyway but in terms of writers, there you go that's that's kind of who do you think hey hey listeners right now who's winning a uh, cage fight the x-men writers or the bat family writers now if you do the x-men uh, writers versus the superman family writers Ah, uh, that's a tougher one. I mean, who wouldn't want to see a battle of, uh, you know, Ben Percy versus Tom Taylor? I mean, that that would be a that'd be a hell of a fight. And Philip Kennedy Johnson, I think, would scrap pretty good. And and uh, like that's that would be a much tougher one. You know, Leah Williams there to distract her former colleagues over in the ex office. Uh, she could wear Power Girls up anyway. All right, second question: Given the habit of comic writers pulling random ships out of thin air, what do you think is the greatest unrealized romance in comics history? Personally, I think Polar Boy and Firestar would have a very steamy romance. I, I see what you did there. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, Polar Boy and Firestar. Well, I mean, you'd have to have a, a crossover there in order to get that to happen. But unrealized romances um, in comics history. I mean, it's starting to feel like Peter and Mary Jane <laughs> at the moment. But, uh, um, I, you know... I think that uh, th there's been a lot of teases. I, I, I kind of can go down the line of a couple. Um, I think that uh, in the in the Marvel Universe, I think that there was, uh, the, you know, they, they've always, not always, sorry, for the last, I don't know, 20 years or so, it feels like Captain America has been stuck in this, uh, you know, Sharon Carter is my gal. And he's he seems kind of trapped there. And I, you get the feeling like Captain America... You know, if you could set up some some level of unrealized romance uh, between him and uh, I, I don't know, and the, another character. I the um, they've teased at Black Widow, Hawkeye for sure in the past. I mean, a lot of the X Men characters have hooked up. I I think Colossus and Kitty Pride was a good romance. Had some sweetness to it. Was something that I thought would be, um, it w you know, was was a good portion of the eighties. And so now, kind of going in the direction they've gone, I, I think it it. Well, one, it takes money off the table, but also I think that was a, there's, there's some work put into that, that buildup. Um, you know, over in DC, I think, uh, kind of, it, 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 it feels like comic companies kind of get in their own way a little bit. Like they do, Dick Grayson will have people he'll kind of flirt and, and be attached to as Starfire, others. And then, um, you know, they're like, buddy, we've got to get him back with Babs, but we're not going to actually get, you know, we're not going to pull the trigger on that. We're just going to kind of 
they'll they'll flirt and there'll be a little bit of relationship and you know maybe it's serious but then two issues later we're going to kind of forget about it, we're going to put all that back into the box and then we can unpack it again later undo that over and over and over again i think that that in comics there's this temptation to want to just um you know have the let's have them get together and, and by the way this isn't just a comics problem i think if you run a parallel to that show friends from many years ago uh, the part of their entire gimmick was the, you know, a will they, won't they kind of build up to this romance between Ross and Rachel. I think over in the X-Files, they did something similar with Mulder and Scully, uh, Sully, um, but um, <laughs> Scully, Scully, what am I, not the Monsters, Inc. character. Anyway, um, the, uh, but they, they, the, the writers, whether it's TV comics or other, they, they get enamored with the idea of kind of this, this uh, baiting romance, this, this mystery of how they get there. And then once they do get there, it, it feels like it's, it's kind of like when a dog catches a squirrel, they don't, they don't no longer know what to do with it. And so they, they just kind of, they, they freeze. And in many cases, the biggest relief is if the squirrel gets away and the dog's like, Oh, hot damn. Now I got to chase it again. That's really what it wants. And I think that when you think about comics and, and TV shows, a lot of this stuff, um, they, they, they do the romance angle, they get they get the romance going, but when the romance actually, you know, when they have to land that story, then suddenly uh, it's like they, they determine they're, they're no longer as interested in it. And that, that's, that quite frankly, that's how a lot of, that's how it feels a lot of the time. I think that uh, comics uh, in general have a, have a bit of a problem where, you know, the writers don't really know how to handle romance. Over in the X-Men, they're you know, busy breaking up or, or having marriage troubles with Scott and, and Jean Grey. And it's kind of, it allows Scott to be this kind of sad sack character. And I was uh, talking to somebody who used to work in the X office uh, a couple of days ago. Um, and she was saying that, you know, the, uh, the writers kind of really wanted, you know, when they talk about the essence of characters, uh, they would say Cyclops is, uh, you know, he, he, he's better alone. Like he's, he's kind of the grumpy alone person, the person who's kind of pining for Jean Grey in a distance, but can't quite get her and Wolverine's a more exciting one and, and kind of all this stuff. And that's the essence of the character. And I always feel like that's a horrible take on a character. Uh, it's a video for another time, but it, it always strikes me as weird that, you know, sometimes writers will point at fans and say, you guys can't get over yourselves. You, you know, you, you constantly want us, you, you won't allow us to kind of have character growth. But at the same time, um, the, the views of the characters in the minds of the writers are often at just as stunted or as blocked. You know, it's a, the entire thing with Peter Parker. It's like, well, he needs to be the, you know, the Parker Luck, the lovable loser. It's like, I, that was him like 40 years ago. Do, you know, do, do we want to have some evolution of the character? It's like, well, whenever we evolve the character, the readers get mad. Do they, though? I don't know. I, I mean, I, I like I think I, this is one of those things where I don't think it's nearly as clean cut as people say, but unrealized romance. I mean, you know, hell, you, you said Polar Boy, Firestar. I mean, Firestar, Iceman, same thing. They that would also I mean, you could put Polar Boy, Iceman and Firestar into a thruple and there'd be all kinds of steam if uh, if you if you, if you know what I mean. Anyway, um, those are probably the ones that come out. Uh, to the top of my head, I, I, maybe, I don't know if it's unrealized much as could do something with, um, I think, uh, you know, over in DC, there's a lot more, if you, have you ever thought about this? There's more couples like Superman is married to Lois connected. Aquaman and Mera are a couple, uh, Hal Jordan, despite, you know, fucking around on most of the things in the universe still, you know, generally is back with, uh, you know, with Carol Ferris. Um, you know, Wally West has Linda, you know, Barry Allen has Iris. Like it, it, you know, even Batman like he, like seems to be able to fuck Catwoman whenever he wants. Now apparently Zdarsky and Teeny Howard are going to change all that. But um, I, you know, almost all the have you thought about this? All the main DC characters are for the most part in kind of committed relationships. I mean, though I joke about um, Nightwing. Um, it, generally speaking, the, the the canon kind of view of that is that he's uh, he's in with uh, Barbara Gordon, and that's just what that's that's how it is, and. Marvel, on the other hand, seems to kind of struggle and hate the relationships. Probably a video for another time, but um, I, I don't know. I find that fascinating. Like DC is much more committed to the bit, and most of their characters are actually in are in established relationships and long term relationships, for that matter. This one uh, big difference I don't hear a lot about uh, between Marvel and DC. Anyway, what do all you think? Uh, committed relationships, uh, you know, unreal unrealized romance. What do you have to say? Let me know in the comments below. 
like and subscribe and thanks for listening